Yeah, we're switching back to cricket on the Sportsmax zone, but shifting our focus specifically to action that took place in Karachi earlier Tuesday, which saw the West Indies women defeating Pakistan by 88 runs in the third and final ODI to complete a comprehensive sweep of the series. After electing to bat player of the series, Captain Haley Matthews notched her second century of the series, a career best 141 to pile up the West Indies to 278 for six in 50 overs. Alia Aline, two for 10, Matthews, two for 26, and Stefani Taylor, two for 29, then shared six wickets to help the West Indies dismiss Pakistan for 190 in 47.5 overs. The series victory also handed the Caribbean side six vital ICC ODI championship points pushing them to 7th in the standings on 14, two behind the Pakistanis in 5th place. The top five teams get direct qualification to the 2025 Women's 50 Over World Cup. Here are the captains reflecting on the series. I think so. Um, we need to uh, look after the positives out of this series, I guess, and uh, the bowlers, especially the spinners attacks, they actually attack really very well. And I guess uh, we need to improve on our partnerships and batting side and batter, sh um, batter should have taken their responsibilities well. We have another series, T20, and we can plan uh, a bit more better. And I guess uh, uh, after this series, we have learned a lot of things. I think our goal of this series was to come out here and try to get six points. Um, so yeah, really happy that as a group we were able to come out there and do that. Um, and then on top of that, I think the way we were able to win the games, um, how convincing it was, um, just adds, an, adds something else onto it as well. Yeah, Nikhil Utam Chandani now joining us via Zoom to discuss the significance of this series win. Well, uh, we'll start here, Nikhil, because uh, the six points gained by the West Indies in the series, putting them closer to a top five spot for automatic qualification to the 50 over World Cup in 2025. Very, very important that, of course, and uh, it just underlines the significance of how emphatically the West Indies won this series. Yeah, massive result, um, Lance. I think it's the West Indies women's team that's trending in the right direction. If we think back to Australia at the end of the year, I know they didn't win the series, but the performances, the fight that they showed, I think it was always a good sign um, to see the direction they were moving in. And I think I've been quite impressed with Shane Ditz, the new head coach, what he's brought to the group seen a couple of new things, some changes, and I think just looking at the body language of the team as well, they look quite up for that task. Obviously, not the easiest of conditions away from home, but it was clinical and obviously led by Haley Matthews. Every time she does well, the West Indies uh, tend to win. Yeah, and um, unquestionably dominant with the bat Haley Matthews, and, um, you know, we continue to be impressed at how this player, only 26 years old, is commanding the stage at the moment. I mean, we were all blown away by her 100 last year in the T20 format, Lance. But why these 200s really impressed me was, I think, just the amount of time she was able to focus for. Um, yes, Pakistan and their bowling attack is not the strongest in world cricket. However, we've seen her come up against Ireland and other teams, weakened teams that you probably thought she should have capitalized against. And at times, she's almost gotten a start and done all the hard work and then given it away. It was, as you said, pure dominance to get not only 100, but a big 100 as well. I think it was significant to get the first and then follow it up two games later with what she did today. It was superb. And even six wickets in the series, the most wickets. When she's at playing at this, it doesn't matter what bowler you bring or what team you put against her. I think um, there's no stopping Haley Matthews. And for me, uh, there's a reason why she won the Wisdom T20 Cricket of the Year last year. I think she's the best in the world right now if you had to pick one. Um, again, it's just the dominance. 21, 19 fours, sorry, hit today by her. 21 fours hit by the entire Pakistan team. Just so much fortitude, but so much concentration for these very long innings. Yeah, and you did point out that you didn't think the Pakistan bowling is among the best in the world. Their captain, Nida Dar, just this series achieved 100 wickets in ODI cricket. The second Pakistan to achieve that, of course. The West Indies have had Anissa Mohammed, uh, Stefani Taylor and Haley Matthews all more than 100 wickets in, in ODIs. But uh, Nida Dar seemed pretty deflated in the post-match interview there with the, with the series loss. Yeah, and it's a good preparation. Look, the Pakistan bowling lineup, they're a team in transition, the Pakistan team. However, it is very good preparation for a T20 World Cup, which will be in Bangladesh at the end of the year. Similar conditions in the subcontinent. And the West Indies historically haven't done so well when they've traveled into Asia. So... To get a result like this, uh, sweep the series, and they'll be looking for similar in the five-match C20 International Series, I think it'll do a lot for their confidence. And good to see the return of a few names as well. 
Shadeen Nation back into the team with that T20 World Cup around the corner. And a new role and responsibility for Shemaine Campbell, who I thought was very impressive in that first one, the international. Yeah, Shemaine was very, very impressive, Nikhil. And, you know, I wanted to, of course, ask you about how she worked perfectly with this squad because we're getting ready for that World Cup. And I know, you know, we can be dependent on Stefani Taylor, which we will spend some time talking about her as well because for quite some time, you know, she's she's been battling with injuries. But uh, fit Stefani Taylor is, of course, a force to be reckoned with. But Shemaine and what she brings to this team, and I also love her energy. I feel like with this squad, and you mentioned it, but just want to spend a bit more time on it. Their confidence seems to be um, extremely high, and I love it, Nikhil. Yeah, well, it's a group of players that have spent some time, as you know, Mariah, a lot of time together, this, this core of players. But to have the experience of Shemaine Campbell, I love the move by the coaching staff to center up the order because yeah. she hadn't batted at three since 2019, was batting at six and seven in other ODI teams. But the fact that she's gone up at three, and I think... It almost facilitates her strengths because she faced a lot of spin in that first one international. And just watching her sweep the ball, it took a lot of pressure off Hayley Matthews because she was able to find the boundary. Right. So if they can have her at three, obviously Rashada Williams, Hayley at the top, and then you have Taylor, Nation, and other more powerful players to come, I think it could be a very strong top six come that World Cup. Yeah, and how pleasing was it to see Stefani Taylor? Because today when she bowled as well, you know, for me... I know personally um, Stefani battling with those injuries and everything. And just to see her back doing what she loves. She's even doing the press conferences, the interviews. I think, you know, I see a Stefani Taylor that it's back like she never left. Yeah, it's the first real time I think we've seen the old Stefani Taylor, if I could say. Yes. And it's not only the 70-odd the she got a couple of days ago, but the fact that she could follow it up today, put on a 100-run stand with her captain, Hayley Matthews. Then she bowled. And she... Yeah, exactly. The bowling is, is massive because obviously she struggled so badly with those, those, those injuries. But for me, Mariah, the biggest thing she adds is just experience. There's a lot of new faces in this team. Zeta James, Aliyah Aline, uh, even Chanel Henry. I think she's very similar to Stefani Taylor. Obviously more bowling, uh, more bowling oriented all around her. But I think if she can follow in someone uh, like a Stefani Taylor and her footsteps, she's going to become a world-class all rounder because she has the raw materials. Hits the pitch quite hard is able to contribute with bat in hand and it's been amazing to see improvement in consistency because her economy in this series suggests that she was a lot more consistent. Henry, that is, just met at four runs and over. So she's building well, was very good in the domestic competitions in the Caribbean and great to see her carrying over that form into international cricket. Yeah, recently interviewed Chanel and, you know, I saw a different side of her because you see her doing her thing with the ball and, of course, you know, she's there, she means business, but I got to see a lighter side of her in that one-on-one -on -one interview, Nikhil. And for me, I never even recognized how confident she is because in the answers, it was as if nobody's better than her. And I love that about her because now I understand why when she comes out she does so well so i think it was a shock for me because i always thought that chanel was a woman of few words but not at all after that interview it must be a jamaican thing mariah i feel like ricardo is the same way i miss him and where is he we need to have him back soon but no she she's great and to be honest i think obviously it's been still a new time in for her in international cricket chanel henry that is but they've put a lot on her shoulders because she bowls across phases in both formats. But her batting ability, as she showed in the CPL last year, and she's continuing to show in international cricket. I think as she goes through her career, she will slowly move her way up to, to the order and maybe bat six, seven, sometimes even number five, because she can bat. And she's shown that she can bat through the middle and then have a big finish towards the back end. Yeah, your assessment of my sister, Karishma, the first match, um, I know she was very disappointed because she didn't get the wickets that she wanted. Of course, she went back to the drawing board and I could say this personally because we had conversations. She she was so upset that she didn't get the wickets that she wanted. Um, in the second match, she picked up three and then today again, she was able to get one. Yeah, what I liked about today's performance especially, I think... At times, some of the West Indian bowlers on a whole have searched for wickets in other series and it's cost them. Ramara, I think, is understanding her role so well and that is just to put pressure on opposition batters and not necessarily worry about the wicket. She's stump to stump, very consistent, very flat trajectory and it's hard to score against her. And I think that's why she got the three wickets a couple of games ago. But even today, 30 runs conceded in eight overs. You're happy with that as a captain. So she's going to be very pivotal for this team in both formats especially against the Panders, but she's so economical in both formats that I think she's a must-have in that 
West Indies white ball team in both World Cups in the next couple of years. Yeah, Orkin, Nikhil, we're going to leave it there. And um, the ODI aspect of this tour completed, job finished, complete and successful. And they look to know the T20 starting later this week as they tune themselves up for the, for the World Cup as well. So we'll have more discussions on that. Thanks, Nikhil. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, and we'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.